Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. How do you make more power from a supercharged 3800 V6? Easy, just lower the boost. Wait, that doesn't sound right, but it is. Time for a cam swap. In this video, we're going to take a look at both ways to make more power with your supercharged 3800 V6 motor because I added a camshaft and lowered the boost and increased the power, and then I also increased the boost. Does that seem confusing? Because it shouldn't be. They're both good. Let's check it out. Back in part three, we took a look at introducing water meth injection to our Root Supercharged 3800 Series 2 V6. Now we were running the upgraded blower, the Gen 5 blower with a 3.2 inch pulley, which was spinning the blower pretty fast and we were creating nearly 15 pounds of boost. And as we saw, the water meth helped lower the charge temperature pretty dramatically, whether we use the, the boost juice, which worked the best and made the most power, or even uh, introducing the windshield washer fluid, which helped lower the charge temperature. But there's another way to lower the charge temperature, and that's actually by lowering the boost. I know what you're thinking, Richard. Have you lost your mind? You should not lower the boost because that's going to reduce the power. But the way that we're going to do it is actually going to increase power by having less boost. And how do we do that? Well, we add a camshaft. So if we make the naturally aspirated motor more efficient, we're going to lower the boost and raise the power. And this is a, this is a great way to do it because you um, get, get a double whammy here. <laughs> less boost and more power, always a good combination. So I'll show you what we did. We ran our 3800 Series 2. Now, this thing was equipped with an L67, a Series 2 motor. We did have L32 heads on it because those were left over from a previous adventure that we did. And we had them recently redone by the guys at LR, which just did a valve job and stuff on them, basically so that they would seal. Now, we ran the, we also ran a Gen 5 blower on it with the Gen 5 throttle body and intake manifold. We also ran a 3.2 inch blower pulley. This thing had long tube headers on it, but the rest of the bottom end was L67 stuff. So equipped this thing made 14.8 pounds of boost and on its way produced 352 horsepower and 371 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added our camshaft. This was our comp cam. Peak power jumped up to 395 horsepower, keep that number in mind, and 377 foot pounds of torque. So we only increased torque or peak torque by about seven foot pounds, but as you can see, we gained a lot of power. I mean, peak power was all the way up to 395, but I want you also to take a look down here below 3500. This camshaft from Comp was a 510 lift. It was a 210, 220 degree duration split, so still fairly on the mild side and 115 degree lobe separation angle. But even at that, it started to lose a little bit of power and trade a little bit of power below 3,400 RPM. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about cam selections. This thing has more than enough torque. I mean, you're still making over 350 foot-pounds at 3,000 RPM, so your <laughs> transmission life is already going to be suspect anyways. But the camshaft had a lot of power gain, and we're also going to take a look now at what happened to the boost curves when we installed the camshaft, because as I said, we gained a lot more power, but we also dropped the boost. Now that we've taken a look at the power gains offered by the comp camshaft, so we went from 352 horsepower up to 395 horsepower, let's take a look at what happened to the boost curves. As I said, low, installing the camshaft will reduce the boost pressure because we've made the naturally aspirated combination much more efficient. So this is the boost curve offered by our stock camshaft. It starts out at 8.3 pounds and rose to a peak of 14.8 here at 6,000 RPM. Now here's what happened when we installed the camshaft. Our mild comp cam, boost was down everywhere. Started out at 7.5 pounds down here at 2,900. And at the same 6,000 RPM that we tested the, the stock cam, 
it was only 10.7 pounds. So we had dropped it by a little more than four pounds of boost by putting this camshaft in. As we'll show, we'll take a look at the charge temperatures. We'll see a difference in that as well. But we lowered the boost by four pounds. Now we ran this thing a little bit higher engine speed. We ran it out to 6,400 where it was still producing about 12 pounds. So again, even at a higher engine speed was still producing much less boost than the stock cam did. So good. More power, lower boost, nothing but a win. So as you might imagine, because we've lowered the boost, we're also going to lower the charge temperature. So I want to show you what effect putting the camshaft in, lowering the boost, had on charge temperature. So we're running the charge temperature with a stock cam. It started out at 137 degrees, rose to a peak of 192 degrees, and you can see the curve. It's just basically rising because we have a rising boost curve, despite the fact that this is a root supercharger on our little 3800. And this is also, it's important to note that this was a single run. And if we were to run multiple runs in a row, like if you're out racing around, the charge temperature would just continue to gain. It would start out higher and then end higher. So it'd be easily over 200 degrees after a couple successive passes. So this was a single pass. But here's what happened when we ran our camshaft. You can see we started out lower, 129 to 130 degrees. And at the same RPM, rose to 175 degrees so we had dropped it uh, about 20 degrees it continued to rise because we ran it at a higher engine speed out to 184 degrees but you can see less more power less boost and a lower charge temperature so all of that stuff is good and that's why we wanted to put a camshaft in and that's why we're thinking about putting even more camshaft in it but now we need to talk about something very important if you remember i told you to remember that we were at 395 horsepower so the only thing better than having a 395 horsepower supercharged v6 would be having one that makes over 400 because we're so close and i'll show you how we did it Okay, guys, were you paying attention when I told you to remember that this thing made 395 horsepower? So this is our combination making 352. We added our comp cam. Then we're at 395 horsepower. The problem with 395 horsepower, it's good on a supercharged combination, but it's not 400. <laughs> and it's so close to 400, so we had to get to 400. So there had to be a way to do that. And obviously, the easiest way to do that with any supercharged combination is to add more boost. Now, I know I just told you that we added the cam and reduced the boost and made more power, but sometimes you just got to add more boost. And that's exactly what we did. I had to have this thing make over 400 horsepower. So sitting off in the corner was another M90 supercharger, a Gen 5 with a stock throttle body and this thing had a ZZP hub on it with a three inch pulley. So basically we were going down from a 3.2 inch pulley down to a three inch pulley. I don't think there's any difference between the blowers. They're both just junkyard used blowers. So here's what happened when we installed our three inch blower pulley. Voila! Huh. Nothing like adding more boost. So we were up near 405 horsepower. P torque was up quite a bit to 390 foot pounds of torque. So the easiest way <laughs> to get more power is to add more boost. And what I'm gonna show you now is we're gonna take a look at the boost curve supplied by all of these, the stock one, and then with the camshaft, and then with the cam and the three inch pulley. So let's check it out. Okay guys, we've taken a look at the boost curves previously. This is our curve with the stock camshaft starting out at 8.3 and running to a peak of 14.8 pounds. Very high, very high charge temperature. Here's what happened when we installed the comp cam. We obviously lowered the boost starting out at 7.5 and ending up at 10.7 at the same RPM, but as high as 12 pounds out here at 6,400 RPM. Now here's an interesting thing. We added the three inch pulley with the the same Gen 5 blower. And here is the boost curve associated with the smaller blower pulley. You can see we started out a little bit higher than the, um, the stock cam and, and the 3.2 inch pulley. It started making more boost than that combination, but then made less. And remember this is with the camshaft 
and the three inch pulley. If we were just to add the three inch pulley, it would be above the uh, the blue run everywhere because that's what pulleys do. And we can see if you compare the red and the green, it's basically kind of just a railroad track. That's basically going from a 3.2 inch pulley down to the three inch pulley, spins the blower faster, more boost everywhere as we can see here. And even with the camshaft and the three inch pulley, we were still making less peak boost than we were with the stock cam and the 3.2 pulley. We only made 13.7 pounds and all the way out here at 6,400. Measured at 6,000, it was only 12.3 pounds with the three inch pulley. So as you might imagine, uh, charge temperature was lower, boost was lower even with the smaller pulley and the camshaft. So again, the cure to <laughs> making more power with less boost, even if you're gonna spin the blower up, is put a cam. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running a cam swap on our 3800 L67 supercharged V6? Well, we learned the following thing. We can make more power with less boost by improving the power output of our naturally aspirated motor. If we make it more efficient, the boost comes down and the power goes up, both of which we want. We can also, as always, make more power with more boost. And we showed that by putting the three inch pulley on in place of the 3.2 inch pulley, speed the blower faster, more air in, more power out. Now, I think there are some other avenues that we could explore to, with this supercharger to get even more power. We could port the heads, we could port the intake manifold. We could do a lot of stuff, maybe increase the size of the inlet of the blower to make more boost. We could do a lot of cool stuff, but I think now after running all of these tests on our supercharged combination, it might be time to start thinking about a turbo. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I will keep testing.